to it because it really is the truth that over the years has grown, grown greater and, and just more vibrant in my life. One of the things, uh, oh, I was just a, excuse the expression, a snot-nosed kid, married, but uh, one of the preachers in our area, uh, I was helping with the young people, and he asked if I would uh, teach a class for him on Sunday nights that he was teaching. Now, some of you don't know this book, but the old timers know C.J. Sharp's Training for Service, okay? And that's what we were teaching. The two weeks that he was gonna be gone had to do with the tabernacle. And I started studying, and wow, I had never, I never understood typology before. I was all gun ho with all kinds of church things, but I never really got into the Word of God. I got so excited about that. Now, some of you here at Crown Point know how excited I get about the tabernacle. Have you seen their tabernacle? They got a model back there. Oh, wow, what are, you, what are you hiding this thing for? You know, I want to take some pictures of it. I still get excited about the way God has designed things, put them together, and given them to us for a testimony. Amen. So I love typology. In fact, I, the more we understand, as somebody quoted that in Romans here, the invisible things of God are manifested by the things that he made. He showed us about himself by things that we can see. By the natural order. Now, the truth that I want to get across to us is that this natural order is going to pass away. But what I want us to see is that right now we are living in uh, this natural order. And God has a design for it. And it's true. It's not going to be here forever. And what we need to do is to be aware of its purpose for us now in view of what God has prepared for us. Amen. You know, have you ever heard this in church? You come, somebody comes up with this wonderful idea, and they share this idea. That, oh, this is great. This is wonderful. And especially from us older people, we hear this interesting, somebody call it the seven last words of the church. Anybody know what that is? We never done it that way before. Is that seven? Well, however many that is, I don't know. You know. We don't want to change. We, we, we want to be like, remember the good old days? Well, the only problem with the good old days, they really were just basically old. <laughs> we don't want to change. But that's not unusual for man remember well let me give you an example of this the bible speaking about the period before the flood or after the flood really it says the world that then was perished it perished but just now think what do you think the world was like before the flood i would venture to say that most people think it's just like it is now that things have continued on right from the beginning the same way. But do you understand that our earth went through a catastrophic change? Amen. Things have happened that, that you, we just don't imagine. We tend not even to think about it. We tend to just, things must always been like it is now. And what I want to get across to us is the fact that this natural order is but a little teeny picture of what God has for us. Amen. Here's what it's, the, the scriptures teaches. Let me get my, I get preaching without my notes here and get lost. Oh, somebody said uh, we were looking forward to the sermon tonight, and I said, so am I. I wasn't quite sure what was going to come out here. But here's, the scripture says, I have not seen, neither has ear heard, the things that God has prepared for us. Now we tend to put a period there. 
That means, oh, you know, we can't know what heaven's about. We can't, you know, we'll just know when we get there. Oh, come on. It doesn't end there. there we, we had, years ago, we had a festival of di divine disjunctives. It, how about that for a title? I'll never forget that. That was Brother Fred's. I, it was but God. That's what it was all about. Amen. And that's what this verse says. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither, neither has entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them to us Amen. by his spirit. Amen. I'm going to ask you, how does he do that? Does he just kind of burst in your thinking processes? No. It's the working out of the body of Christ. It's the working out of the spirit within our life. It's the working out of God's eternal purpose in us that gives us a glimmer of what God has prepared for us. The hymn writer said, the hill of Zion yields a thousand sacred sweets before we, I never get to remember how that ends, we'll walk the golden streets. Oh, that's how the last part ends. Do you, do you know that? How many of you ever think about heaven? Okay. What do you think about? What do you think about? Well, don't misunderstand what I'm going to say. These are great. and They're scriptural. We think, well, no tears and no sorrow. Do you know what happened? Oh, it was back a number of years ago. And I think, if I remember right, we were studying the book of Revelation. And I came across a passage in studying there. It says that his servants shall serve him day and night. And I read that. And it was right, at, right after a time when I basically had fallen flat on my face. And I read that. And I said, oh, God, that's what I want. That's what I want. And at, at first... It, it just humiliated me. It beat me to the ground. Because I do such a terrible job of serving God. I fall so short. A good friend of mine, an acquaintance of some of you, Art Wilkerson, uh, every Thursday night we go into a Michigan City prison and Art preaches. And Let, let me digress just a minute here. Just, just a little reminiscing here, old times. Given came to me and said, uh, I'm going to be leaving the singing tonight. I said, well, you want me to play the piano? Now, some of you, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, but in, in the bygone years, uh, whoever didn't preach played the piano. Okay, that's kind of the way it worked, you know. And all of a sudden, I realized that I did a miserable job of serving God. Art had this... Uh, uh, he's talking about mounting up on eagle's wings. And he said, look, look, look how God has compared nature and, and, and the various animals, the lion and so on. And he passed out, we have a little, we break up into small groups afterwards, and he passed out these little study sheets. And, and one of the questions was, which one, which one of these animals do you identify with? Do you, where, where do you see your strength? And I looked at it, and I flunked the test. I didn't feel like an eagle, I didn't feel like a lion. I mean, right down the line, I'm... And it is rather humiliating. But then I remembered this great truth that one of these days, I'm going to be the eagle. I'm going to be the lion. I'm going to whatever else. One of these days, I'm going to mount up on eagle's wings. I'm going to always, day and night, run and not be weary and walk and not faint. The time is going to come that I am going to serve God perfectly. That's what heaven means to me. That's what it means. I get so sick and tired of falling on my face. But I've learned something. You just get up and keep running. Because the requirement is not for me to be successful, although I want that. The requirement for me is to be faithful. Amen. Now what I want you to do is just... Try to let your mind go. Uh, I read uh, years ago two books on the attributes of God. One was by uh, uh, A.W. Pink, uh, The Attributes of God, it was called. And he, he, he treated it almost like a hammer. Man, he beat you over the head with all these 
truths about God. They were good. It was good. The other was by Tozer, uh, the knowledge of the holy. And Tozer just kind of lifted you up and, and just let you hang out there in the heavenly places, you know? Well, I want, I want you to kind of hang out. And that's kind of the way I'm going to approach this tonight. I want you to just get your mind in gear and think of the, the, the expanse of what God says in his word. He says, you have been faithful over few. How many? Few. few. Now, how many of us feel like we're, we're doing a lot of things? So, sometimes I feel like my life is full. Some, in fact, the chiropractor said to me today, he said, yeah, uh, you know, he says, I don't know if this is a good thing to say, but they do say there's no rest for the wicked. He was talking to me. <laughs> So sometimes we just feel like, i got so much responsibility, i got to be faithful here and faithful there. You know? But when it all is said, if, if our whole life is consumed in things, it would still be but a few things with the promises, I will make you ruler over many. Amen. The faithful person in the household became the ruler over ten, not households, ten cities. What I want you to see is, is what happens here on earth in this natural time. This time, God prepared nature for a purpose. Yes, it's going to pass away. And I go, oh, Lord, let it be tonight. But God has a purpose for it. And what I want you to see is when it passes away, it's not going to leave a void. Remember what the apostle said? He said, we groan within ourselves. To be clothed upon with our body, which is in heaven. He said, not that we, we don't want to be naked. We don't, want to, we don't just want to get out of nature. I don't want to float around someplace in between. I want to get out of nature to get in God. I want to have a spiritual body. You know? I, I, I'm thankful for a natural body. You know, It eats. Some of you do a pretty good job. Of, some of us do a pretty good job of that. There are a lot of things that we enjoy. See? I'm, I'm thankful for the natural body. Oh, but it, it gets tired. Even, even, in the, even in the good things, it gets tired, like some of you are right now, okay? Uh, you, get, you get sleep. Have you ever fallen asleep praying? Uh, now, that doesn't sound too spiritual, but that's, uh, it, that happens sometimes. You know? Here you are, in the presence of God, praying for some really tremendous things, and you wake up and the Bible's laying on your chest, and, and what happens? Oh, the time will come when I will be so, and you, every child of God, will be so sensitive to the things of God. We'll have a body that's compatible to the very presence of God. Just as this one is compatible to earth, this, we, we, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. This is a tremendous creation of God, the natural order. But it's only for a season. God has some better thing for us. And the apostle says we groan for that time. Be clothed upon with our body from heaven. Oh, there's a lot of things that we could say about this. I got gobs of scriptures. I knew I shouldn't have done through this. Look, look, can I digress just a minute? I, I realize you don't like me when I do that, but I'm going to do it. When I found out that Gibbon was preaching the same sermon, you know, I, I thought, you know, what is he going to preach? You know? so, I, so I had two sermons ready. You know? No matter what he said, I was going to, you know, they didn't preach either one of the two that I had ready. So now I have got about two and a half sermons here, all, and I, I, I'm having a hard time getting them squished in here. Let me say this, and not, I'm going to just touch on some things that are, that, that are here in the natural, but we're going to have them later on in a magnificent way. One is our, our physical bodies. We are going to have a new body, Amen. a body compatible for the spiritual realm. Amen. And this body, even though it's going to be so different, so magnified, it's still going to be me. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? It's going to be me. It's going to be you. 
Remember that text the uh, brother quoted last night there from Thessalonians? He says, what's our joy? He says, it's you, you brethren. Where? Here? Well, yes, there's a, there's a, I, we enjoy this. What does the psalmist say? Uh, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Hey, think about heaven. Oh, talk about unity. We'll have it there. We have a, we have a hard time getting three, I'm going to put quotes around this, sister churches uh, to kind of get together. Unity is kind of hard. It won't be in glory. We'll be made compatible to that. But there's this thing of relationships. You understand that really life is about relationship. We had a wonderful experience. A number of us uh, uh, grew up in the Black Oak Church of Christ. And, and a very dear friend, uh, Jim Corral, said, uh, when, when, don't we, when don't we have a reunion? You know? So we decided on a 50s reunion, those of us that were there in the 50s. Some of you know Don Hargrave. He was the preacher then. And... and uh, so we planned it, and we ended up with a pretty nice group of people out. But it was amazing, wasn't it, Dean, that, that nobody talked about the little tiffs that we had. We had a few of those. Nobody talked about how we thought some of us did things the wrong way. What was the gist of the conversation? It was, oh, how we love one another. Oh, how good it is to see. Why not? This is wonderful. We, we had one dear brother who got up and, and spoke and he said, oh, it's so good to be with you and so good to see you and so on. Who within, was it like a month or so, went home to be with the Lord. He knew he was dying of cancer. We didn't then, but he did. What was so important to him? The relationships that we had. It, don't, don't you find it amazing that there is a relationship on earth that God is designed to picture that ultimate relationship with him? Yeah. He says, I, I, from Ephesians there, he says, this is a great mystery. So I'm speaking in a mystery. If I speak of Christ in the church, what was he talking about? Talking about husbands and wives. There's no intimacy closer than a relationship of husband and wife. And he says, that's a picture of glory and of your relationship with me. Amen. Amen. What did he say there in John? What, what is eternal life? You know, it, you know, some people, eternal life is living forever. Oh, come on. There, there are people here living that don't think they are. You know? No, eternal life is this. Knowing the Father and knowing the Son. Amen. Amen. How many of you know him? Oh, yes, we know him. How many of you know him well? Ah, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not compared to glory. Not compared to glory. I love what he said there in John, don't you? When he said, uh, uh, I, write in, I write unto you children, because you know your sins are forgiven. And he said, I write unto you young men. You know what he said to young men? Nice row of them here, man. You know what he said? He said, I write unto you, he says, because you are strong, because you have overcome the wicked one. Oh, I wish I had the energy of young people. You know, I wish I didn't have to take a nap when I get home from work. I take them even when I don't plan to take them. But there's another group. Hopefully some of us fall in this group. He says, I write unto you, wow. Because you have known him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But the truth of the matter is, what seems to be, oh, like we, we, oh, God is so precious and so wonderful, and yes, I have learned. I'm, I'm able to sing the song, it's just like Jesus. I, I, I learned some of the ways of God. Remember he said, God showed his ways unto the children of Israel, but, I mean, showed his works unto the children of Israel, but his ways unto Moses. And some of us, by God's grace, are beginning to see his ways. But understand, we've just touched the hem of his garment. Amen. Not only are we going to know his ways, we are going to be used of God. 
His ways are going to be accomplished through us. We are going to, well, let me give you one area. Remember when God created Adam and Eve? He said, let us make man in our own image. Remember James said that, that even fallen man is after the similitude of God. That, that image is stamped on us. And even in a fallen state, even in an unredeemed state, there is still somewhat of that image. In fact, when he said, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, what's the very next thing that he says? And let him have dominion. Amen. Let him rule. Let him reign. But Jesus comes along. Oh, we, we kind of know what that means. Don't we? Hey, I know what it means to rule and to reign, right? Jesus comes along and he says, don't be like the Gentiles. What was he talking about? He's talking about how they rule. He says, those that are in authority, they, they have you under their thumb. They exert pressure. They do it for their good pleasure. They rule you for their ends. Then what are we to be like? We're to be like Jesus. We're to be like Jesus, who humbled himself, who took the towel, now, some of you think that only happened, you know, back in the upper room there. But what does it say? There's a time coming. Amen. And Jesus said he's going to do it again. Amen. Who's he going to do it to? I, I, have, I happen to almost feel like Peter right now. Just saying, oh, or not me, you know. But he's going to do it. He said, I'm going I'm to serve you. The king of glory is a servant. The sons of the king are what? Servants. Servants. What are you to serve with? What, what can you serve with here? In the natural order. The things that God has given to us. What did, what did John say? Let's be real spiritual. Here's a brother that has a need. I'm Brother, be healed, be well, have all the food that you need. Goodbye. That was rather spiritual. I, maybe I could, no, let me quote a few scriptures along with that, okay? In fact, you know, let me, oh, I do have my tie on. Uh, I don't wear it very often, I forget that. Okay, you know, let me really look religious. Maybe turn my collar, no, I haven't hit that. What did Jesus say to do? What did the Apostle John say to do? Meet that need. How? Feed him. You know what Jesus said? He says, when you saw me hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was in prison, you visited me. Various, when I was naked, you clothed me. Oh, when did we see you? When was that? And you did that with the natural order, the things that are given to you right now. You've done it unto me. Do you realize that you've taken the things of nature and made them divine, made them an instrument of God. But isn't that exactly what Jesus has done to you? You are a child of the wicked one. He came and he served you. He gave himself for you and made you an agent of God, an ambassador. Oh, brethren. We're not home yet, but we have a taste of it right now. How about when we sing these hymns? Uh, there's, a, there, oh, there's just so much I could say, and I'm just going to have to skip over some of this. How about when we sing these hymns? Like the one we recorded there. Oh, I love that one. Do they just sound nice to us? Do they make you hungry for heaven? The morning gilds the sky, my heart awaking cries, may Jesus Christ be praised. Oh, how I want that. You know how bad I want that. 
I, I, I rebuke. I, there, there's a period of time between getting out of bed or waking up and getting out of bed and getting into the shower that my thoughts are not on God. I was thinking, boy, am I hurting. In fact, Brenda had to kind of help me lovingly kick me out of, you know, shove me to get me out of bed. I, you know, finally got in the shower. In the shower, I tend to sing. And, you know. But, you know, I would love to have the very first thing on my lips to be praised to God. Do you realize? Now, maybe some of you, you know, maybe you're there already. Bless the Lord if you are. But do you realize that every bit of our life and glory is going to be with this full consciousness of the presence of God? Is it now? Oh, come on. If you're, if you're honest, uh, you get out and, and uh, uh, have a flat tire on your car and you're out there in the rain changing. You're very, there's just very few of us that are singing, Praise God from whom all bless. Oh. And, 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 and especially us men. Have you noticed how narrow we are? Now, Brenda doesn't like for me to tell this, but there are times, somebody, this was years and years ago, she used to come, when I come home, she'd say, oh, I thought about you all day, honey. Did you think about me? <laughs> then I committed sin and said, why, sure, honey. <laughs> she, she, she's, she's learned better. I mean, she's found out. That, yeah. In fact, there, there were times when, when things were happening, we were involved in it. it we can even, it can even be spiritual things. I, I remember times when we, uh, those of you that are familiar with the, uh, the word of truth, we used to crank that thing out on an A.B. Dick mimeograph. Anybody remember that? There was a process called slip sheeting. And what you did was throw a piece of paper in between so that the ink wouldn't copy, you know. How many did we run of that? Uh, it was like eight pages and on two sides and I don't know how many thousand. That's a lot of slip sheet, you know. And, well, you're sitting there putting them in, you know. <laughs> Hey, just hear, hear me he's thinking, oh, God, you're wonderful, you know? All I, was, all I was concerned about was getting that slip sheet in there without the thing slowing down or jamming it up. And particularly, I didn't think about, oh, how wonderful my wife is. I really was thinking, I wish she could do this instead of me. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm being a little, carrying it a little too far, I think. But do you understand what I'm saying? What God has created. Those are good. He said, work is under the Lord. And that, and that God accepts that. God accepts when I, when I, in my present job, I get out there and, and we get busy and you're on the computer and you're thinking, no, I don't have thoughts of God. But I'm working for him. I'm doing it as under the Lord. Amen. I'm not pleasing my boss, even though he's a good friend of mine. I'm not pleasing him. That's not what I'm there for. And God accepts that. In glory. There'll be 100% recognition of the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Just as the flood radically changed that antediluvian earth, so will the coming of the Lord radically change nature. Amen. Amen. It'll radically change it in that it will perish, as Given pointed out last night. That's not the end. Amen. There's a new heaven Amen. and a new earth. Do you realize there are going to be similarities? Yeah. Yeah. That's, what, that's what it's for. God has given us some pictures. I, I really think some of you, if you really begin to think about heaven, and if you would begin to think about it in regards to, don't misunderstand, but I, I like the word passion. There are certain things that just get a hold of my spirit. I get on fire about. I think God is showing me in just some little ways what heaven's like. What it's going to be like in this presence. And I think if some of you would begin to think, let your mind be so caught up in the promises of God, you'll be able to take those verses that, that to uh, a lot of people seem like pretty carnal things. What does it mean to walk on streets of gold? I mean, the cost of asphalt now is almost like walking on streets of gold here, you know. 
had a little drive done it. I didn't want the whole yard, I just wanted to drive, you know. What does it mean? When you begin to walk, remember the, the tabernacle was covered with gold, the ark of the covenant was covered with gold, the, the cherubims of glory and gold, the presence of God was there. And to walk on streets of gold means that the very presence of God is a coming. God is not going to be a God of far off. Oh, I know he isn't that now. I know he's near. But he's going to be much nearer when this old Lord passes away. If your attitude, if your view of nature is I'm going to use it to the glory of God, you'll find that when God is ready to either take it out of your hands when he calls you to be with him or when he comes again and just takes it off, you know what? You won't have to jerk it at all. You'll just glad to give it to you. What does he say? Romans 12. One is the principle. It's there. What did he tell you to do with your body? With, with, with the members? He said, present them to God as a living sacrifice. Yes, amen. Here I am. Now, forever. We can say, as all the ones have said, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. Amen. Amen.